But joining us on the program right now, very pleased to have with us from the blog Snowflakes in Hell, the blogger Sebastian. How you doing? Hey, Cam. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for coming on the program tonight. No problem. Uh, you have been covering on your blog the uh, the case of Gerald Ung, uh, a guy who uh, was attacked in Philadelphia uh, by a group of individuals, uh, shot uh, one of his attackers with his legally carried firearm, was charged. Uh, the uh, the trial went to the jury yesterday, and or the case went to the jury yesterday, and after, what, about five hours, the uh, jury came back with an acquittal for Mr. Ung. They said that he acted in self-defense. Yeah, yeah, it actually wasn't. I, I don't even think it was five hours. I think he came back. They came back in, in I think, about two or three, w- within two or three. Wow. I mean, I, I, the, the amazing thing, I mean, this, this, this case has been so interesting. Um, I mean, you could really honestly make an episode of Law and Order out of this. I'm sure, I'm sure they will, only in the episode of Law and Order, Ung will get convicted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but th- th- there are... There are just so many interesting things about this case because, I mean, I mean, obviously when this happened, one of the unusual things was that the Fox News had captured, um, I mean, the local affiliate of Fox News had captured the video of this whole incident on their surveillance tapes outside their studios. This actually happened outside their studios. And after this had happened, we, we all basically looked at the video, and I said, you know, every all the gun bloggers had looked at this video and said, you know, this this really looks like a case of self-defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could see Ung retreating. You could see that, like, he drew the firearm and was retreating as he drew, and he was being attacked, and then he, he one of the members of the party had rushed them, and it's like a week later when the Philadelphia district attorney had announced that they were filing charges against them, we were all kind of like, well, I mean, this seemed like a clear-cut case of self-defense. It's it just seems unbelievable that they're filing charges against this guy. Well, and and not only uh, do they file charges, I mean, there were some pretty unbelievable statements made by the uh, the ADA, as you point out in your blog. The prosecutor asserted that uh, Mr. Ung could have fired a warning shot, could have aimed for the legs, uh, or or even could have uh, tried to cross the street and and call the police. Yeah, yeah, so, and, th- and and those were pretty remarkable assertions by the ADA. I mean, first of all, discharging a firearm within city limits is a crime in Philadelphia. And I can guarantee you, if you did that, uh, th- they would have most certainly tr- charged him with discharging a firearm within the city limits. Um, their other assertion was that, you know, he could have crossed the street. But if you look in the video, you can clearly see one of the members of Di Donato's party flanking Ung on the side. I mean, if he had tried to cross the street, he would have walked right right into the guy that was trying to attack him at the time and the assertion that he could have fired a warning shot into Di Donato's leg. I mean, at the time, if you look at the video um, and if you search on the Internet on on Ung shooting video, you'll probably find it. Um, If you look at the video, when Di Donato is charging him, you know, he kind of puts his leg up in an attempt to, like, you know, stay back because he is warning them at the time. If you look at the testimony, you know, stay the bleep back from me mm-hmm. and um you know he puts his leg out to kind of stop him and he grabs his leg so it, it, it's kind of remarkable that the uh, the assistant district attorney is saying to to gerald ung well you should have shot him in the leg when he had his own leg and i i'd really like to know how many people standing on one leg could could make a hit at somebody else's leg while that person was holding their own you should suggest that to top shot <laughs> Maybe that could be one of their uh, contests later this season. Uh, you know, I, I I wonder, I mean, is this now the official policy of the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office? If you are being attacked and you are a concealed carry holder, fire a warning shot first, aim for the leg? Yeah, I, I really hope not. I mean, this is certainly bad advice. I mean, it, it is definitely bad advice if this is what they're suggesting. And, and I... And I don't for a moment think they're sincere about this. If you if you fire a warning shot, they will charge you with that. Of course. I mean, if 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 Ung had fired a shot at his leg, you can bet he would have still been standing trial. Oh, absolutely. It would have been you know aggravated assault, uh, uh, and I'm sure that uh, you're absolutely right. The uh, the prosecution would have continued. So, you know, the the other aspect of this is that uh, there's a lot of talk that Mr. Ung, despite being acquitted, is now going to be sued by his attacker. 
in a civil case in Philadelphia, uh, in, in Pennsylvania, as a state, does not have the Castle Doctrine law. Yeah, that that that's true. Um, I mean, as, as some of you, as some of your listeners may be aware, we we tried to get Castle Doctrine passed last year late in the session, and we we did succeed, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Governor Rendell vetoed it mm-hmm. at the last moment where there wasn't time to attempt to override it. Um, and Castle Doctrine would provide immunity f- for a case like Ung's, so that if, say, De Donato's family were to bring legal suit against Gerald Ung, Castle Doctrine would have offered him immunity. I mean, he's been acquitted on the charges in, in a circumstance that was very clearly self-defense. So, you know, he, he would be, a, you know, kind of a, 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 the exact kind of case, I think, that the lawmakers would have in mind as to who this would protect. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you'd like to to hope that the uh, legislature could uh, pass Castle Doctrine uh, before Mr. Ung becomes the, uh, you know, the the sort of the uh, example A uh, or the uh, prime piece of evidence as to why Castle Doctrine is needed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and hopefully that will happen. I mean, his uh, Gerald Ung hired one of the best defense attorneys in the city of Philadelphia that he possibly could have hired. So, I mean, if, if this can happen this session and given that um, the GOP controls the vast majority of the legislature now. We had a massive win in the 2010 elections, and now we have uh, Governor Corbett, who, who couldn't be more friendly on this issue. Um, unlike our previous governor, Ed Rendell, he, uh, he will most decidedly sign Castle Doctrine if it's, if it's put before them. So hopefully we can get this passed quickly and we can get these kinds of civil, civil immunities that, uh, that I think gun owners in Pennsylvania need. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious as to your take on uh, what what the attitude is going to be in Philadelphia uh, towards right to carry a- after the uh, the Ung verdict came in. I mean, you know, you go back to uh, even the previous mayor who tried to shut down the uh, the office uh, that processed right to carry applications, tried to blame right to carry holders for uh, an increase in murders in Philadelphia a few years ago, the harassment of uh, people who have uh, out-of-state permits in Philadelphia. That we've, we've discussed that on the program on a number of occasions. Will this, you think, cause Philly politicians to, to, to step back for a second and think about what they've been doing, or do you think the, uh, the attacks on uh, right to carry are going to continue unabated? No, I, I think the politicians will still continue the attacks unabated, unfortunately. But I, I think one thing people have to look at is this was a Philadelphia jury that acquitted Gerald Ong on all charges. The politicians might be anti-gun. The politicians might be anti-self-defense. But the people of Philadelphia still, you know, know a bunch of BS when they see it. This was a Philadelphia jury that acquitted him. And I think the politicians will still do what politicians do. Um, but ultimately, I, I, justice prevailed here. And I think that's an important thing to consider. Absolutely. Well, Sebastian, as always, sir, great talking to you, and uh, look forward to doing this again very soon. Yeah, good talking to you too, Cam. Sebastian from the blog Snowflakes in Hell joining us here on Cam and Company.